Hello everyone and welcome to another beer review and today I'm actually going to do a local beer woohoo now I've discussed this brewery a few times in the comments with a, a few of the viewers like the Papa Legba and all that type of stuff and uh, they know about this brewery and they quite like it and Adrian quite likes this brewery but while they can actually make a very nice beer I have found them to be a bit hit and miss, more to do with consistency than actually being able to, to do a good beer. But what we're going to do is we'll see what we'll get today. So we're going to basically just do the Otter Brewery, which is a farm just outside of Honiton in East Devon. So there you go. And I, I used to live in Honiton, so I used to, I'll be totally honest, don't tell anybody this. I find people in Haunting a bit bloody strange, to be perfectly honest, a bit bloody strange. You know, I'm not saying they're inbred and that type of stuff, but some of them could be. <laughs> That's me digging a hole this time, I'm not. But yeah, some of them can be a bit strange, so they are. <laughs> yes. But anyway, so yes, we're doing the, the Otter Bright, which is a dazzling, refreshing lager beer. And it's 4.3% and it's over £2 a bottle. But I did buy it in Waitrose, so most of the time you buy things in Waitrose, it's usually over £2 a bottle. I think it was about £2.20, between £2.20 and £2.30, I think it was roughly. And uh, it says, all otter beers are brewed using our own water, which comes from the head springs of the river otter. Brew a beer that's crystal clear and pure as the summer sun. This was the challenge cast before for our brewers. Otter Bright was born to refresh drinkers with its cool, subtle lemon lager taste and a long bitter finish. English Fuggles and local lager malt, teed barley, go together to make this a unique beer from Devon. And I quite like that because they're not claiming it's wonderful or it's brilliant. Oh, look at us, aren't we making something mystical? Oh, God, Harry Potter will be creeping his panties with this one. No, this is more of a case of I'll give you some facts. Apart from the little bit of the kind of brew beer that's crystal clear and pure than the summer sun, you know, if you want to do kind of a, um, a little bit of rhyme, I suppose. Okay, fine, fair enough. But So it's 500 ml, 4.3%, and uh, apparently it contains barley, wheat, mint holder malt, have the, uh, yes, yes, anything else, uh, and yes. So it's uh, brewed at Otter Brewery, Lupit, Honiton, Devon, EX14. There you go. So, but yeah, I've had ups and downs with this brewery. They can do it, and I think that's probably the thing that used to annoy me about this brewery more than anything, that I know they can make a good beer because I've tasted it, and I've tasted it in the cask and everything else, and you think, that's a bloody good beer. And then other times you're thinking, what happened? That's the most infuriating thing is you can do it, so you should be doing it all the bloody time, not when you want to. Um, so yeah, let's crack it open. Oh. And uh, I've had to go on a diet, just thought I'd kind of whip that one in. Yes. <laughs> had to go on a diet because I've been putting the beef on, by the way. Oh. I was reading an article in uh, the Sun newspaper. Well, I don't actually buy the Sun newspaper in case people start getting on my back about that. You know when you read your kind of Google News type scenario, there was an article in the Sun that was about this woman. I haven't worn a bra for over a year. Well, I'll be totally honest, I haven't worn a bra for almost 50 years. So there you go. So you... Just over a year's pretty crap, love. It's nothing to get a thing about. You're getting the national papers. But recently, especially after Christmas with the amount of beer and food and everything else that was consumed, that uh, I'd be pretty close to actually wearing a bra myself now, you know, because it's, it's getting almost justified. So I thought, right, I need to go on a diet and kind of start kind of losing a bit of weight, which hopefully is kind of working. I feel that I've got a lot more energy when I'm awake. The only problem is I'm still falling asleep. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, when was it? There was one that was a crap. Was it, was it Saturday night? 
sitting on the couch and that, that was me out cold. And I woke up about, what, back at two, you know, half past two, quarter to three, and I'm thinking, oh, bollocks. And it's worse if you've got a YouTube on, because that's, that, that's the kind of what we call the YouTube gamble or the YouTube roulette that you put it on autoplay. And you start watching something and you fall asleep and then you wake up and then you go back in your library and see how many videos you've actually managed to actually watch when you've been sleeping, how many videos have played all the way through or the next one. And I think my record is 17, 17 videos and two of them are basically our documentaries. 17 videos I've actually managed to sleep through. I think it's my age and uh, my diet and uh, I'm probably a lazy bugger as well. But yeah, <laughs> let's get this poor. But yeah, I'm, I'm starting to kind of lose weight, which it hopefully will continue because th this is the problem when you're doing reviews. Because you, you, each bottle of these is like a cream cake. That, that's, it's equivalent cal calorie value of a, of a cream cake. So if I'm winding through so many of these, then it's, it's not good for you. And this is, of course, I'm drinking quite a lot for reviews. But also, I'm drinking because I fancy beer, you know, that's a bit relaxed with a beer or something like that. So, so it's not a conducive uh, hobby for kind of staying fit and healthy. You're bloody happy though, but uh, you're maybe not so fit as healthy as you, as you really should be, especially at my age, because I'm going to be 50 this year. Oh, yeah. Prove. I'm only doing it just because I've proved my parents wrong, especially my dad. My dad thought I'd never reach the age of 50 because I was such annoying shit as a kid. He thought, nah, that bugger will even make 21. You know, although in saying that, it was touch and go at some point. <laughs> he nearly got his wish. <laughs> so anyway, what does it smell of? Nothing. <laughs> good start, groom, good start. Can't smell anything in this beer. Uh, oh, that was another thing, by the way. I'm also basically now going to separate the audio out. So just to let people know that I'm obviously still doing the YouTube videos, I'm going to make some kind of different styles of editing just to see, just kind of liven things up and change the format a bit and see if people like it or they don't like it. So just try out some new things. But also what I'm doing is, Obviously, if people can't watch the videos or they're struggling to kind of watch the videos or they're just sick of the sight of me and they don't like, you know, or maybe, maybe I might make them feel kind of nauseous and things like that and just stop them from kind of projectile vomiting, then they don't have to look at the videos. Because what I'm also doing is putting the audio from the videos up as a podcast because people can then watch it as a podcast or watch it as a podcast. God, I'm really doing well today. Listen to it as a podcast. Or they can watch the video, so it gives them both formats. So if you're in the car and you want to kind of hear the review, then that's fine. And you don't have to suffer my ugly mug. And there you go, you see. Best of both worlds. That's what I think. Anyway, let's see. We're getting in with this yet. Maybe a little hint of light malt. A little bit of grain, but I'll be totally honest. You're not getting much. Yeah, maybe a light hint of malt. Give it a look and see what it looks like. Oh, it's nice and clear though. It's quite kind of straw-like. Um, it's not too light. It's very kind of British kind of lager, kind of colour. So it's not too light. So let's see what it tastes like. That's a better one. That's one of the better ones. Yeah. For lager, it's got little hints of ale in it. So it's not one of these overly crisp lagers. There is a kind of, how would you say, it's slightly ale-like in its kind of mouthfeel and just some of the flavour profiles. Um, which, of course, I would like, but if you want something of a more kind of traditional lager, then this might be a bit of a, a step too far from that point of view. But... It's not overly hopped, so it's not ridiculously hopped. There is a nice kind of under kind of current of sweetness, multi-sweetness, which is just nice. 
and it's it's going for a kind of more bitter finish there, rather than a a crisp dry finish, which is kind of more normal for for certain types of lager. So from that point of view, it does kind of make it, but well, in my view, a bit interesting and uh, something different, which. I don't mind. I quite like something different. What I don't like is people producing the same crap time and time again. I mean, it's like I've said before, is I honestly don't understand why you've got all these craft breweries and the first thing they're going to do is either an IP or a pale ale. And you're thinking, why don't I just do a golden ale? And why do you have to do something that's hopped off its tits all the time? I mean, I don't mind hops, and I do like certain hoppy beers, but as I've said before, there's got to be a balance. And this just firing hops into it and just chucking American hops and all this nonsense just to get citrus flavours rammed in that beer. You're thinking, yeah, just like every other bloody craft brewery is doing it. So so you're not really making anything kind of unique. You're not making anything new. You're just kind of grinding out the same crap as every other craft brewery that's trying to follow this trend and trying to get on the gravy train and to a certain degree there is that people are just doing it just to kind of make money while everybody else is doing it and they're selling it so we will just do the same type scenario and it's a kind of competition of who can ram in more hops into the beers I'm going on a rant again So let's break down these flavours. Starting off with a nice kind of malty sweetness and a little bit of grain, but quite a good bit of malt at the start there. Moves on to the kind of mid tongue, and you're getting, getting a little bit of lemon there. It's almost ever so slight florals as well, just getting little florals there. But again, you're just getting a kind of a lemony kind of accents in the mid tongue. Again, you've got this kind of uh, malty sweetness that's there, and a probably a little bit of accents, just a little hints of bitterness in the mid tongue. And you got a little accents of floralness, a little accents of lemon, and you've got these ever so slight little bitters. Now these bitters are important because when it goes on to the actual aftertaste, these bitters kind of start to become more accentuated and kind of develop and they do give you a bit more bitter in the finish so when you get to the kind of aftertaste you've still got the malty sweetness it's starting to dissipate a bit you've also got the the kind of grain flavors that's starting to kind of dissipate but you're still getting little bits of floralness you're still getting little bits of uh, lemon kind of accents in the aftertaste but what you are getting a bit more is a little bit more prominence to these kind of bitter accents and it is giving you a little bit more of a bitter finish not a full kind of uh, hopped English ale kind of bitterness but there is a bit of bitterness and a bit more bitterness than you probably get in a normal lager from that point of view so it, it does make it kind of a bit interesting but like I say it's, it's like a kind of like a like a slightly hybrid, it's it's lager esque in some ways with the kind of green profile and things like that, but slightly ale like in others, like with the kind of bitterness, just with these kind of uh, and if again it's not citrusy kind of lemon accent, so it's not the kind of pithy kind of bitterness type of accents that you would get with the types of hops, what you're getting is a kind of lemony kind of almost. Slightly lemon curdy, that type of stuff. So that kind of, uh, how would you say, lemon cello kind of lemon flavour. So it was a kind of a, a sweeter kind of lemon accent rather than the kind of bitter lemon accent. The only thing I would probably say is, goodness sake, probably a little bit too sweet with the malty. Um... Multi sweetness is a little bit too much, but too prominent. I mean, it's it's nice there, but for it to be a lager, you want it to be a, that's that little bit less 
I probably even see to a certain degree that even for a male it'd be a bit too much as well, in, in my view. I mean, I always find that darker beers can kind of hold a little bit more malty sweetness. The lighter beers, you've got to kind of dial it back. If you're getting too sweet, then it doesn't really kind of go and to, some, to a certain degree. You just want it to be kind of a little bit drier. You know, that type of stuff. I'm not going to say sour or bitter, but you just want things a little bit dry, a little bit more crisp. And it's hard to get that if you've got quite a strong, sweet malty base. And I think this is what it's got, just a little bit too much for my liking. But yeah, it's very drinkable. Nice mouse feel. It's quite a nice beer. I would say yes, it's quite a nice beer, but like I said before, it's a bit too sweet probably for a lager. Um, and obviously I, I've chilled it more like a nail, so it's been in the fridge just chilling to the kind of degrees. More like a kind of a seven, seven stroke eight degrees C, which is more kind of ale temperatures for chilling. Whereas you would lose some of the sweetness and some of the other flavour profiles if you took it down to kind of more lager temperatures, which is kind of three to four degrees. So if you bring it down to that kind of thing, then yes, you'll lose some of the flavours, but you won't get any of that kind of crispness or dryness that you would probably get with a lot of lagers. So yeah, hot summer's day. Yeah, but there are certain golden eels I would probably prefer because they're not as sweet. So there's a little bit of kind of um, bitterness there. It's just, I feel it's just a bit too sweet in the mid tongue. Not too bad, so bad because you've got that little bitterness or more bitterness in the aftertaste. But uh, in my view, front of the mouth and mid tongue, it's just that little bit too sweet for my liking. But in general, yeah, overall, nicely brewed beer. Nice, uh, I feel. Right, what would I give this out of 10? There's a question. Right. Right, it's a nicely brewed beer. It is a nice mouthfeel. I like some of the flavours. Some of the flavours are, are, are quite nice. I think they would also be quite nice if they'd done more as a as an ale rather than a kind of lager. Because they're calling this a a dazzling and refreshing lager beer, so but yeah. As I said, it's kind of almost like a hybrid in between a kind of ale and a lager. Um if it didn't have this sweetness, so much sweetness in the front of the mouth and the mid tongue, then I would probably give this, I'd probably give it maybe a seven or seven and a half, quite easily. But because it's just got that sweetness there that I just think is a bit too much for my liking, it might be fine for other people and my view is try it and see and uh, let me know what you think and let me know whether you think this beer is maybe a bit too sweet or maybe it's just right for you. But for me, it's just a little bit too much for the style of beer. And uh, I prefer, especially my kind of lighter beers, to be in a little bit more of the kind of slightly bitter side or crisp and dry side from that point of view. And I want that little bit of acidity change, especially in the lager to give that crispness and dryness in the aftertaste. And I feel that, yeah, the aftertaste is fine. It's just the front of the mouth and mid-tongue. It's just that multi sweetness is that little bit too much. So for that, I'm going to give this a six and a half. I'm going to knock a point off. Price-wise, that's another thing. If they could get it around about the £2 mark or under the £2 mark, then yes, I would probably give it a higher score because I've got to look at it at the complete package, but roughly about 220, 230. I know it's a locally produced beer, 
but it's only 4.3%, it's 500 mil. Yeah. I feel that the £2.30 mark is probably a bit too much. But I'm going to take on board, I did buy it in Waitrose Supermarket, which is, a, as most people know from the UK, is quite a kind of upmarket supermarket. Or best way to put it is a bit overpriced supermarket. Um, if you're not from the UK, then you're not going to get so much value for money in Waitrose compared to a lot of other supermarkets. So uh, you do tend to pay a little bit over the odds for items and, and, and especially beers, especially if you're buying individual beers. I mean, the beers I bought in Waitrose... If I was buying them in other supermarkets, there would be some sort of kind of promotion that would give me probably you know, either a three for two or a four for three kind of thing. So I would get one of the bottles for free, usually the lowest price one. You don't get that in kind of Waitrose supermarket. You, you pay for everything you get out of there and you'll probably pay over the odds for it as well. So yeah. So it's coming in about two pounds thirty odd in Waitrose, and this is the local Waitrose within a kind of a stone's throw of where the brewery is. So it really isn't that far away. And it's two pounds thirty. But yeah, I think even then, if I remember, I've seen it in Tesco's and things like that, the local Tesco's and supermarket, and it was actually over two pounds. That's what they were roughly about. Two pound twenty there, you know, two fifteen, two twenty. But I think for this type of beer, if you could get it below two pounds, then yes, I would probably give it another point. So I mean, if it was didn't have that multi sweetness, then it would be a, a seven, seven and a half. If it was under two pound a bottle, then I would probably maybe give it an eight, that type of thing. But because of the the price, the multi sweetness, six and a half is the best I can give it. And I'm going to be realistic because people want good beers, of course they do. And uh, But there's also going to be a certain level of value for money because you, you can buy a four pack of other types of beers that are quite nice and quite drinkable. I'm not saying they're, they're wonderfully fabulous beers, but you can get four packs of beers between £4.50 and £5. If you're paying £2.30 just for one bottle... Whereas, I don't know, it's just two pound seventy, and you can get another three to go with it. You've got to be kind of realistic from that point of view. So yeah, it's a six and a half out of ten. I would recommend it. Go and give it a try and, and see what you, you you think and see if it suits you. The sweetness is just a little bit too much for me. So, thanks for watching. Cheers, and bye for now.